fool right here can he eat? Welcome to warrior class. With the teachers with ass. And, and you, you will too if you pass. All right. Uh, this is the multiplicity, multiples, and multipliers uh, episode. I don't know why episode didn't want to come out. Um, <laughs> so this came from the idea of really lately I've been seeing a lot of so-called instructors not having a, a, a realistic mm. uh, perception or realistic techniques, realistic, nothing. Um, one dude, you know, watched it. He said he taught himself capoeira. Oh, my gracious. Said, this is capoeira for the streets. There's no capoeira for the streets. Let's, let's make that plain. Uh, oh, I, you know, I, I love the way capoeira looks and I can see where certain techniques in it can be used for the street, but most copywriter teachers, let's be honest, don't have a clue because they're more into the dance. You yeah, both. And that, that's cool. If you want to dance, dance is cool. I, I, I can dance. I can pop and break and shit. I, I can still do some of those things. And that's cool, but I'm not going to try to defend myself with that shit. Right? Even though I'm trained in self-defense, I'm not going to say, well, I'm going to use this pop locking move to, to, to stop them. But I recognize what that pop locking move could be. Then if I, since I recognize it, I'll use what the actual thing. I'll use the actual thing, not what it could be. Yeah, okay. So, not the streets. That's number one. And if it was, you taught yourself that? A dude who told me he dreamed copware. <laughs> uh, he dreamed. I just know that these people be real about what we're talking about. I mean, he challenged me. Now, I didn't, I didn't know at the time that he was involved with my ex wife. Oh, man. So he had a person that he wanted to whoop my ass. Yeah, he had to show you. He had to prove something. I'm just as much. Well, we were at this priest's house, and the priest was preaching that we were fighting. I'm wondering why, because the priest knew he was involved with my ex-wife. You know, he want to, he wants fight ball going on, going on, whoop his ass, and don't even know what this fight is really about. And greetings, everybody. Eugene Rice saying, "Welcome to our new member, Deborah Rodriguez." And everybody else out there. Um, sure. Yeah, I mean, shit. You want? I didn't. If I had a clue who he was, I probably said no because I, I would have known his agenda and I would end up hurting him worse than I did. So I said sure. So you know, I, I bring up my um, guard, and he starts doing some wavering, going down to the ground. I just need to pull in the face. He fell on his back. I got on top of him, and then I just started raining elbows on him. Uh, he was flailing around, playing around. I lifted up a little bit. He flailed and, fought and, and, and flipped over onto his back. I started smacking his ears, smacking his ears, smacking his ears. He was a strong dude. He fought to get up, and it rolled me over into my back. So then he turned over, and he's trying to punch me, and I'm just controlling him with my hips. Throwing him this way, throwing him that he's missing, and I'm talking the whole time like, "Nah, nah, brother, you, you gotta, you know, put your knees up under my backside so I don't throw you like this." But as he's trying to do that, I'm throwing him around, and then I threw him into a smack, threw him into another smack, and I threw him into an elbow, threw him into an elbow on this side, and then I just let him go. He just rolled over. Oh, okay, that was that was good. That was, that was good. I said, "No, no." I'm good. I'm good. And normally I'll, I'll, I would say, yeah, that was good, man. That was a great fight. So they say face, but something just, when he said he dreamed technique, <laughs> I said, no, no, I'm good because I trained. You cannot dream techniques. And that's why this just happened. And then I got up and left and found out later that day who he was. 
because we yeah. went to eat and then my ex-wife came in and he he had this still this challenge challenging energy towards me and then i i told him and you know like brother you know the next time you, you keep talking i get it from this table it's not going to be sparring i'm gonna beat the shit out you okay she came in kissed him and then i, I re- oh that's why he had that energy <laughs> And I, I looked at her and said, you, you should have told him about me. You should have uh, told him. To do him justice so he don't make a fool of himself or get hurt, right? So yeah. that was that. That was it. So people like that are very dangerous because they'll take students too. So this guy who, who's on YouTube, if I knew his name, I would say, I, I can't remember that fool's name. He was doing it with just his cousin at, at first. Then I watched another video. He got students, and he's teaching him, you know, these the capoeira knife techniques. Wait, knife the, same, techniques. the same dude that we yes. was, He got students? I, I sent the video to y'all. Yeah, he's doing self-defense. Uh, uh, these, these are capoeira. First of all, you taught yourself capoeira, so how do you know there are even knife defense techniques in there? I, I guess because he taught himself, so his, you know, his awareness. I do want to ask you about that, though. So... Just to, just so we clear, you can't receive technique through your dreams. Yes, you can. Okay, I just want to make that. I just want you. Yes, if you have been training right. uh, for years and years, and you receive something from whoever, whatever your belief system is, from the ancestors, God, your the Orisha, whoever it is, uh, and it's really all in your head and understanding from your head has come to you imaged like your ancestors, whoever it is. I'm not saying the ancestors are not real. I'm telling you that's how that that is delivered to you. Like like maybe like if you're a math if you're a mathematician or something, you wake up, you got that, you got an answer all of a sudden, you or you dream of a uh, numbers or something like right, that. Something right. Like that. The answer was there. But you've been in the math your whole for 20 years, but, 25 years immersed and, in it. And that so you're pulling on things in your conscious you weren't able to pull out. Yeah bro, yeah bro. Just wanted to, you know what I mean? So that, yeah, a person, because techniques have come to me in dreams, but I still don't just validate them. I say, hey, this can't be the dream. It. Let's test it. Right. That's and the other we, part I was going to say. Pressure test that shit. Pressure test it. Pressure test it. Pressure test it. Every time yeah. I've had that, it's worked. But I've been doing right. self-defense martial arts, indigenous African martial arts, for 50 years. Now, right. this dude just... Has never trained. He just dreamed. Yeah, cause my dreams, my, my technique and dreams ain't working yet. So I was just trying to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still it, getting... it, it, it take a little bit. So <laughs> okay. this dude had never trained, and he's doing stuff from dreams. So it was never gonna get nothing. All right. Just had to reason why that. anything came to him in the dream is because he had watched cop motherfuckers do capoeira. You watch it, it doesn't. You have no understanding of it. But you can have dreams. Don't believe that. That's why I was telling you. Do not try to read a book or watch a YouTube video and think other than our videos because we know how to break them down. Uh, and there are some, a couple of people who do, but a couple, most people, they just they just demonstrating on, on a YouTube video. You're not going to learn martial arts through that. I had a dude tell me he watched my videos, read my books, and now he, he created his own African style. First of all, that's disrespectful to the ancestors who <laughs> created... The African martial arts millennia ago. You've been studying 50 years. I read your books and made your shit better. <laughs> well, he didn't say that. Now, I did have a student tell me he was going to, you know, make some corrections in my book. A student of mine. <laughs> he's going to make some corrections, not grammatical either. Damn. You know, okay. things that, you know, that I had missed. Um, mm. or, or, <laughs> you know, missed it. I said, okay, really? Yeah, okay, okay, go go ahead. And the, the shit he said was completely wrong. But anyway, uh, so this guy, Venus Raj, Deborah, um, Jeans. you know, teaching knife defense, and I'm looking, and it is terrible. Oh, I seen the one knife defense. I've That's what I'm that. telling you. He's like, you know, grab it, boom, and then oh. boom, <laughs> and then boom, you hit it. Like, get out. But he's making corrections on like karate. See, you don't do this because such and such. You don't do this, but you do this, and the way he did it was awful. Yeah, what you said in there was was um was was really valid. Like, watch the hands when 
what the other hand ain't doing. You know what right. I'm saying? And, and, and the positioning. So he's doing a punch. He's punching like, <laughs> you see my hand. His, his wrist is up like that. The person's wrist is up. They are not trained. If they are, they train for like a week or with the worst teacher on earth because this will get your shit broke when your, your wrists are like this. Yeah. I always tell them to lock your wrists. Uh, a student of mine, what now? You always have students who ain't listening. He bought Bob. And I ain't talking about Belay because Bob's right there. <laughs> he bought Bob. And he's punching with a hook. He said, I was working my hooks. He, I, he And he had a wrist, uh, uh, a wrap on his wrist. He, I said, well, show me what you were doing with the other hand. He said, you know, I did my hooks. And his wrist is bent like this. I said, that's why you dislocated your wrist. I ain't never taught you to throw a hook like that. <laughs> Everything is one piece. Yes. I said, but you went off the ranch, partner. You decided I'm going to punch like this around the corner. I ain't never taught you that. Yeah, and you tore your shit up. That's what happened to you, right? Mm -hmm. uh, a sister was training, learning how to fall. I said, do not put your hands back. I explained it. I showed her why. I said, you will dislocate your wrist or your shoulder. Your butt is a huge muscle. It, all you're doing is sitting down on the ground. All you do is sit down. All you do is sit down. That's all you're doing. All you're doing is sit down. Say the muscle. She goes back like a tree, number one, a falling tree. That's wrong. You and then she it. reaches back and snaps her shoulder. Well, snaps mm -hmm. her collarbone. I say, hey, see, so even when you're trained, you have people who are not listening, they can hurt themselves. So imagine a person who just, they just made up a, a, a goddamn martial art in their mind. They it's have a, no idea. martial art, but they just made up that they know it. And they're teaching people. I'm sure, if not right now, the students are going to get hurt, especially since he's teaching knife defense techniques. And, and you know, you know what's about? That's one of the reasons why I would not be an advocate, even though I love us and I want us to be on the main stage. Um, it was a post about somebody saying they wanted to see a big stage Capoeira movie where the guy that was, that was Milton. He wanted to see Capoeira win in I, the movie. I commented on that. I said I, I don't want to see that because we imitate art. And we'll go out and jump in these capoeira classes and thinking we're gonna be something. Or not in capoeira class, just watching the movies. Because even in the yeah, 70s, even... in the 70s, we leave out of 70s and 80s, we leave out of Kung Fu out, out of the movie theater. And I see people who don't know nothing. I can tell they don't know nothing about martial arts right. just trying to do kung fu. Before you even say it, that was me. I was that person. <laughs> I left out, we left out, went straight to the out to the yard, and we all fought. That's what we did. Fake, fake fighting. And, and if you watch those old Shaw Brother movies, first of all, if you fight like that, you're going to get your ass whooped by somebody really trying to fight. <laughs> Who the hell is fighting choppy like that? We was after we left out the movie. That's <laughs> right. That's exactly. exactly who was doing it. <laughs> and that shit is so slow and choppy. If you fight like that for real, you're going to get your teeth knocked out your mouth. Yeah. Thank you, Teresa. Uh, yes, stop reaching. You know, Eugene Mason said, yeah, Bo, that was me too. I had the shoes um, and all, that's all That's all we had. Now, later on the day, we'll be talking with, with, with uh, Ron Hall, uh, who's a Hollywood martial art movie actor, uh, director. Um, you know, he'll he'll tell you shit. Uh, caterer, <laughs> clothes designer uh, for his own. He had to do everything, right? But um, if you've seen the promo for it, you've seen him in the movie Bloodsport 2. Right. He was cold. That's why I first saw him, man. I went to see, you know, I went to see Bloodsport. Okay, that was all right. I said, I'm going to see Bloodsport 2. By now, it's not in it. It's, it's some other actor. A lot of people don't even know Bloodsport 2 even came out. It's, it's cold. Yeah, it's the cold. technique is colder than the first one. The techniques, mm -hmm. for sure. And so, it's his brother in there. And the first movie, the brothers are all acting like animals and getting knocked out quick in Bloodsport, the first one. Right. Let's for two. I said, let me see what they're gonna do with this brother. Woo! He was tearing shit up. His kicking ability was quick as shit. His hands were quick. Um, very athletic. He was cold. Um, now, when I saw that, I was like, damn, he should have been the star of the film. And, and, and he'll probably talk on it. 
because uh, I believe actually the film he was supposed to be the star of the film, but since he's black, they they weren't the studio wasn't having. Mm. Uh, the people who originally hired him, I think he was it was supposed to be like around him, a story around him, but then the, the studio changed that because they didn't have one no black star. That he was obviously that. he was obviously the star. That happens people. all the time in uh in Hollywood too. The story changes depending on the actors who they like, who they don't like. They'll change, take parts out, take words, take all that. Now with Ryan, um, he took martial arts and not for you know. I, I, he'll have to tell you how long. He he definitely uh, trained, but. He was such a strong athlete. When you see it, when you see him and, and, and look up Ryan Hall, when you see his technique, you're like, damn, you must have been doing this for 50, 60 years. So uh, he was a natural talent. He was a natural, right. And and so it came to so, some people can do that. Uh, not many. Not many. Thank so you, the brother, I was talking about with the cop rare thing. He's not one of those people. He ain't athletic. Uh, thank yeah. you, Teresa. Now, um, well, he was did. able to do. I, I've seen him do. You know the actual. He's the actual cop wear moves, and he he, you know, does a flip and does. I, I like their axe kick with it. Where they axe kick and they come down to the ground. Mm. I ain't seen him do uh, it. So he did. I said, okay, he got. You know, even though he's he got a little chub on him, he, he he's moving. Right, that's good. Be proud that you were able to look at videos and watch people do copperware. Never took copperware class, and you're able to do that shit like that. That's good, but don't fool yourself and think that you can defend yourself, let alone teach somebody else to defend themselves. Man, that is an injustice. Rod, if you're in asking a class and learn, says you know, there's no copperware in my town. Well, learn something else. Hmm. Learn something else so you can defend yourself. Then, after training for some years, qualifying yourself to teach others, do that. If not, you really don't give a fuck about your people or the people or whoever you're teaching. I think he was only teaching black folks that I saw. You don't give a fuck about them, really. And you may not even know you don't give a fuck. It's about your ego. I, I, right. And your ego, ego always screws up stuff. Always. Right. I ain't never seen ego just make mud, just you know, just 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 win and and mm -hmm. and be honorable and never, never. Rod said a student attempting to correct the teacher who has five decades of consistent training and teaching. Interesting. <laughs> yes, well, that, that's because he was ego. He was very arrogant. Uh, he moved, so he no longer trains. Uh, yeah. So he asked me, could he begin to teach from my book? And I said, hell no. And Teresa, you are exactly right. The movie Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did kind of indicate that Bruce Lee was a lot of theoretical acrobats. Theatrical. 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 Oh, okay, yeah. The excuse me. Um, the distance. <laughs> yeah, so Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, uh, Bruce's daughter, you know, is pissed. She's going, she goes back and forth with... Uh, yeah. Uh, Quentin Tarantino. I think she may have tried to do a lawsuit. But you can't sue on, on that. Um, we did an episode on, on Bruce and these letters that he sent. Really not the whole episode, but uh, part of the new. These letters he sent, he, he, he convinced a person working for him to basically take the fall for him doing uh, cocaine. This is a lot. Don't forget, Bruce is a Hollywood entertainer. Yeah, okay, see. and a lot of people admire him, but he was caught up in that world for sure. Um, and so once upon a time in Hollywood, some of that's true. The way he was, and it, it was, it was, and it, he was wrapped up in ego for sure. You know, um, but the way he fought, I don't think he fought a the white stunt man that that Brad Pitt play um, right. it was somebody else well same with Steven Seagal Steven Seagal was talking about he the baddest person on the set of uh above the law well you had an old 70 year old man 
there, Judo Jean LaBelle, who is transitioned now. Judo Jean LaBelle said, oh, oh, are you? Yeah, I can beat anybody in here. With Aikido, for real. Judo Jean LaBelle choked his ass out in seconds. In seconds. I was teaching some brothers, and this brother comes to me. I'm teaching them how to do. People at that time didn't know nothing about a rear naked choke. This is back in the in like 82 or something like that. 80, I think 80, 80. They know nothing about, you know, UFC hadn't came out, none of that. I think the UFC came out in 94. People didn't know shit about rear naked chokes unless they were doing an art that did these different chokes. And so I'm teaching the brothers, put them ahead of the curve on mugs, right? This dude, all he does is karate. He says, and shout out to karate. He's no, no, not on karate, it's on him because that's all he knew. So he should have recognized, stayed in his lane. Uh, he said, I, I, don't, I don't think, you know, that'll work. You know, you, you're teaching the brothers this choke. That choke won't work. You know, see, I do karate. I just get out, you know, the choke. You won't even get the choke on. I just block your hands. I said, well, let, let's test that. Let's test that. Let's be scientists in this shit. Let's test that. All right. And people, oh, because his name's Dwayne, because Dwayne was respected as this karate cat, right? I'm looking at Dwayne. You, I was 21. He's like 45 at the time or something. Been training all his life in karate, and you only have a, a, a first degree black belt. That means to me, that tells me you have not been seriously training, or you have such a big ego. You got your black belt and stopped training because you thought you knew something. But you wear a black belt. Black belt is just a, a white belt who didn't quit. That's all you are. <clears throat> so I said, okay. He said, you know, so he puts up his hands like this and shit. I knock his hands away, hit his shoulder. He turns around, put him in the rear naked choke, knock him out. He gets up. He said, I guess it does work. Yeah, everybody cracking up. That's when I began to regularly teach the brothers. Okay. Hmm. That, well, I actually, I had to prove myself too. I had let a brother stab at me and I ended up, you know, having to, for real. And I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna move for real. But that is when that brother lost all respect. He became a joke. And karate amongst a lot of those brothers became a joke because of that. Now I said, well, don't joke on, don't clown on karate. It was him. It was him and his ego saying he can't be choked. I had another student tell me he can't be choked, choked him out. We have to humble ourselves. We have to humble ourselves. Somebody said Gene LaBelle, he fought Bruce, but it wasn't the way it was described in that movie. Tarantino made that up. Yeah, of course Tarantino made it up. He, he you know, he wrote it for entertainment. But my, my point was, and I said he didn't fight uh that stuntman. Brad Pitt wasn't playing Judo Gene LaBelle. He's playing somebody else. I said that didn't happen. Uh and I don't know if, if Bruce fought Judo Gene LaBelle. He fought somebody. I was Speaking talking about Steven Seagal got his ass whooped by Judo Jean. Speaking of Tarantino, I was just thinking, um, we was talking about Warrior movies uh, not too, a uh, couple episodes ago, Warrior TV shows, or that just Warriors like, or that we as Warriors enjoy. And uh, Tarantino did a, a show I saw on Netflix about Uber. You, I don't know if you've seen that, Baba, but um, mm -hmm. it's called Super Pumped. And the way the story is told is strictly through like the lens of war, um, but it's corporate war. But the, the CEO of Uber is looking at it like actual war against the state. It's a it's an interesting show. Um, just a, again, from a, a warrior's mindset or how they wage. I remember Baba telling me this a long time ago when I wanted to go at some somebody I, I thought was on some, bull, on some bullshit. But I was like, well, just remember you attack somebody business, you wage a war on them. And I always think about that now because especially in Atlanta, all these bullshit ass vegan places and vendors that charge a million dollars for, for, for shrubbery, but um, just something good to remember. And it also made me think about uh, real quick while you was talking to put a quick disclaimer out. 
and I, I maybe I can find one that we could put at the beginning of the show. I, I watch other podcasts, and one thing I realize is that not a lot of podcasts are live. And even the ones you think are live, a lot of times they record it, edit it, and then put it back out yeah. on a live stream. Um, so just keep in mind that this is a live show. Sometimes we may we don't get a chance to go back afterwards and say, you know what, I shouldn't have. Maybe I should have dialed that down. Maybe I, you know what I mean? We don't get that chance. We don't get to do the technique again. You see it. We do it the first time. Sometimes I have, most of the time, I have no idea what the technique is till we get here. And then we, and then Baba got an idea, but he don't even, sometimes he don't even know exactly. He just may have in quotations, work this out, show examples of this. So I just thought about it. I just wanted to just put that out there to you. Just keep in mind that this is a live show. And have some, you know, some, some, you know, some forgiveness if we make a mistake, mispronounce something. We may, I may lose my temper about something. Just give us that grace. I just wanted to just throw that out there, being that we are live. And thank y'all for tuning in and subscribing and hitting the like button and bringing more people on. I appreciate you. We appreciate you. Peace. Uh, to uh, originally, um, we were asked by two of the owners of BPM, uh, uh, well, told Kamal and uh, Ear Doctor to, to do a pre-recorded show. And we tried that. And I felt that was... That wasn't us, and it wasn't giving the people what they needed because we couldn't answer questions. But well, we could. We sat in there, but we couldn't make adjustments because it's the videos just playing. And that ain't how we work or teach. And, and so I said, no, nah, to, to teach properly, if a person said, well, I don't understand that. Right. And then, yeah. then we got to go back. Well, we have to, then we have to do it live. And so we just we said, look, we're going live. So the first live thing we did was with the the, the hammer uh, workshop, right? And after that, folks saw we could actually do a live workshop, right? Uh, the, the big secret is this is just like how we do class, pretty much. <laughs> that's that's the secret. <laughs> that's the secret. This is how our classes are. Uh, I've had yeah. I've had some students want me to tone down how I talk, what I do. Not doing that. <laughs> Don't be so black. Damn that. I'm not too militant. You just too sissy. I, I I said <laughs> you know uh, uh, you know you know tone down the blackness. Well, man, I'm so light. If I tone down the blackness, goddamn, it's gonna be a white show. <laughs> I'm not toning down my blackness. I wish I had some more. I'm not toning down the black. I'm blackity black, black, and proud of it. And will be that to the day they put me in the goddamn ground. I and when see. people talk about me, they're going to say he was black as hell. Love being black. When they talk about my children, it was a dude came into uh, one time. He kept, first of all, he had a kilt on. <laughs> that dude had a kilt on. His white wife. And talking about uh, when we were doing starting Black Tastic Con, uh, originally called Sopspit Con, State of Black Science Fiction Con, S O B S F Con, Sopspit Con, right? He says, uh, Why would you start a black con? This is a brother. Why would you start a black con? It's, it should just be a con. I said, Man, shut your ass up. <laughs> I said, You come on here. You know, my, my wife can't come to the con. Your wife can come to the con. We don't care that your wife is white, man. That was your choice. We don't care that she was white, but she, she can come to the con. Anybody That's what I was going to say. She can come to the con. Right. I said, look, uh, you talking all of this, you know, I'm really disappointed. I said, you're disappointed. I'm happy. I wake up black. I look over and see my black wife. I get out the bed, take my shower, walk out the room. I see all my black children. I see my black grandbabies. I said, I am happy to be black. And so when we did a con, we, of course, we did a, a black 
science fiction and fantasy convention. You don't have to come. Your wife can still come. You don't have to come. <laughs> so it's much like that. Now, of course, I ain't got no students like that. But if you question my blackness or, or, or want me to tone down my blackness, then I'm not the person for you. And if you've been with me for years, to even do that, to even say that, is either disrespectful or you are ignorant of who I am or want me to be somebody else. I don't care if you're dis dissatisfied with who I am. Let me make this shit clear to all my students and anybody ever trained with me. I'm not going to tone down who the hell I am. And I would never ask you not to be who you are. I would never do that to you. And that is when we start, when I started talking, that is ultimate arrogance. To ask a man to not be the who the hell he is. And you think you train for me. You think you got a better way, a better way of getting people in. Well, how many students do you have? Like you said, shit, this lie. <laughs> but I do not I'm not going to sit back and say I should have toned it down this is what y'all need to hear yeah, bro. and you can deal with me or not you can deal with me or not I love you but you're not going to change the man that I am not from being black that is an insult that's an insult you can say okay I'm too harsh I can, I can I can rock with you. And I've tried to tone that down. God damn, yeah, it's kind of being too black. Don't say uh, you're being too much of a man. <laughs> you being too manly. You're being too Chicagoish. That all that shit sound crazy. I don't know about the Chicagoish part. Yeah. I can only no, be what I am. Chicagoish. I can only be because I've been in Chicago long and I've been here. I can only be, and I've been here 24 years. I can only be what the hell I am. Let me be who I am. And if you can't rock with who I am, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Deadly serious about that, man. Yeah, bro. So I'll never want to, don't even bring it to me. But if you bring it to other students and I hear about it, I'm going to say something to you. But but don't ever bring that up to me again. Ever. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to tone down who the fuck I am. That's not Baba's job. That's not what he does. Yeah, bro. Peace, Baba. Peace, peace. How you doing, Omidy? And if I toned down who I am, I wouldn't be able to teach how I teach. And then we wouldn't the same, get what we get out of it. The same teaching I'm putting into you is because I'm black. The same teaching I'm putting into you is because I'm teaching you indigenous African martial arts. So I'm an African. Yeah. And I love it. I love it. And it doesn't matter who I'm around. I never tone that down. Never. A, a, a sister came one time. If the FBI was in here, you wouldn't be talking like that at this thing. I, I said, FBI is in here. <laughs> what you talking about? The FBI in here. And you might be the FBI. The FBI is in here, so I'm not toning it down. What the hell I do? The only thing the FBI don't get is personal shit that they can use against me or my students. You're going to get the black now. If they write on the dossier, he black and he black. Well, goddamn, put, put a line on the black and he black, too. <laughs> put that shit in bold. Put black in big capital. <laughs> when I write black in my books, if you ever read any of my books, black is a black person, not a black car, but a black person. Black is always capital B. Mm. Always, because goddamn, it's it's a capital offense to me to not be black. I would like um, I would like all of us to enjoy and embellish our blackness as much as Mr. Balaguno Jutati does. Yes, absolutely. Um, real quick, that's real shit. I know I'm doing, but um. And we appreciate it, bro. And that's why we love you for exactly who you are. And that's why we appreciate you. I wanted to, before we get into it, this uh kind of they're not really the news, just something that I ran across that maybe shouldn't nothing should surprise us anymore, I guess, in this world, but still every now and then I was like, I didn't even think about this. So it was this it's this white woman, and she was talking. This came out of Thanksgiving for Thanksgiving. 
she was speaking about she did a, a reel she was speaking about how her family and a lot of white people how they have indians supposedly in their blood through their ancestry and indians she was as in from india no from like <laughs> native american native you know american, uh -huh. so she was like you know a lot of her family and friends where they live at in the northwest have indian um heritage and they got the they got pictures paintings artifacts and things that they passed along to show and prove that so recently she got an ancestry test her family did they had zero native american in this in their blood and so she was like well how can this be and so a couple of their friends did the test none of them had any indian in this in the uh, bloodline so she started researching because she like she thought she had they used to say they had Cherokee cheekbones. <laughs> <laughs> Come to find out, she didn't know it was a thing. Um, I think it was called matter of fact, I know what it's called. It's called the land lotteries. I don't know if y'all heard it. Uh -huh, yes. I, I knew what land lotteries was because they did that in the town that I'm from when they did the Wilmington Massacre and murdered black folks. They basically auctioned off and lotteried off the land. But what I didn't know is, and what she didn't know, is they ran them off their land and their houses with everything still in it. They didn't remove any, the clothes, the food, the family pictures. Now, I'm, what I'm getting to is how sadistic, right. twisted, and sick do you have to be, not to take over somebody's shit, I'm not, I'm not talking about that. This war, whatever you want to call it, okay. To take over my, sh I'm going to take over your shit and I'm going to assume your identity. I'm not even going to be white. I'm not even going to be black no more. Now I'm um, Japanese. My family Japanese. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell them where your clothes. I'm going to take your grandmama picture and say that's my motherfucking grandma. I ain't never, I've never heard of some shit that ridiculously fucking evil. Well, you have them. I, okay, you're right. I have. I have. Yeah, these motherfuckers, yeah. That, that, that shit right there. I could, like, look, I could, I'm, I'm okay with you taking the shit, running people. It's all nasty and wicked, but I can understand that. But why the fuck do you got to assume my shit? Take the heirlooms and, yeah, and just the, the thing. Well, first of all, also, they take the heirlooms and then they took your land. Because that's the biggest have my heirlooms. I'm like, the, the but thing about my land, and then you charge you charge me to live on my land. Yeah, they cold. I, look, that's regular so sinister shit. I'm okay with that. But when you're wearing my skin, god damn. I mean, come on, man. Like shit. But well, but 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 see, that wasn't and, and that's when they when they take the when they take the land is as insidious because what makes you this thing is the land. Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's the, so, the original evil, or uh, right there. you know, when 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 the gullers say "come here," not like not like been here. That's dealing with land, of course. Yeah, Come here. They they can they can take all because the, they've always taken our shit, put it in museums. But if if they took all our shit and wore all our shit, we can just say, "Oh, uh, appropriating bastard!" But we still live on our land. But they took, they took the shit, wore our shit, and, and you. I, I, when I see white folk wearing African clothes, I'll be just like about to go berserk. Because that's the that's the icing. But, but but that's not the big thing, cause no, they can be ripped off. They took the land. No, that's just the after, icing. After, after, they, they they take that African clothes and they go in the house. They take it off, and they they put that in the closet, or they could burn it. No, but yeah, their yeah. house is in Mali. Right, no, that's definitely not the worst. That's that's not the worst. What I'm saying is, uh, it's almost like I'm in I'm enslaved, and now I got to see you take my wife. You know what I'm saying? Slavery is the worst part. That's just the the sinister evilness yeah, that you got in you. That you get. Well, you are, I'm already saying. My, my point is, my point is, it's all evil because evil does evil. There, there's evil does evil. If you give degrees of evil, then person will get their ass whooped for one. Mm. Person get whooped for one, person get killed for another. They deserve the same punishment for taking your clothes, taking your mama's pictures, taking the land, all of it. They deserve so some of the, all I did was all I did was took no, your mama's I mean, picture 
All, yeah. and the, the, the person, all I did was took this hill that your family owned. Yeah. I'm speaking the mindset. Yeah, and they though. suffer from all of it. All of it. I they get the same punishment. I'm, I'm only speaking strictly from a, a mind, just something to think about, because we understand why you would take land. We understand that. Maybe not how you did it or none of that. We understand that. I can't un sit here and rationalize me telling my daughter, this your great, this your great grandma. Why the fuck? Just tell people that's your grandma. You, I ain't got to make you believe it. You got to be real psychotic. And that's the only thing I was the speaking thing. to. And, and the whole $5 Indian thing, like you right. said, is, is they not only are they taking that land now, taking those possessions now, taking that identity, they want into the future. They want their children to right. benefit, you know, because right. they're registered. Now. But I don't even think, I don't even think they consciously did it saying be, so we can assume this for legal but I, I i don't even want to speculate i just think it's a, psych, a, a psychotic type some type shit. i don't even think they I, I, thought I that you deep know, about it I, I, I'm, more, I'm more of the you can't fathom the depths of satan you cannot <laughs> fathom the depths of satan you talk about that all the time you ain't gonna we be always we always would try to think of and rationalize what they're doing you can't rationalize what you wouldn't do. Like a serial killer, you can't get into their mind. That's what well, 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 serial killers have been studied. And so there are patterns. There are five patterns. And one day maybe we'll do a show on on, on serial killers. That'd be great. Serial killers, there's a pattern that they fit by, that they well, go by, and you can you can you can mic it down to after they go through the cruising phase, they're gonna kill. Can you yeah, they kill, they go back into another phase. So there are phases they fit. Can but you the psychopaths? We have study crackers like that. Excuse my, excuse my language, but huh? Psychopaths, can, do, can you kind of have a template and for that? Psychopaths them? and sociopaths, they have patterns. But you just, what I'm saying is, even though you may know that, you still can't fathom why would this motherfucker want to, you, you know can. what I'm saying? That's kind of you a, can, because that, that's been studied. That's been okay, studied for, 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 not eons, but decades. The African been studying that for thousands of years, right? Because you know we deal with the man, uh, especially the Yoruba deal with the, the brain, the, the the and and the mind, right. a lot. Them and 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 the Congolese a lot. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you can know why and not understand. You feel what I'm saying? Like I know why you but, did it. But, I don't understand why you but, do it. But once again, be late. We understand why they do those things. Right. I get what you're saying. But so there are deep studies that have been done. So it's knowledge, wisdom, then understanding. We, so we understand those, but we do not understand why people would just take your shit and do so and so. And I hear people say, people just people, lie, lie. Because there are certain things that certain people do that others never would do. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Teresa, so we the West that's, too. that's a lie. Same way when, when people... They say, well, how is it African martial arts? Well, how do you say you're just African? Because there are things that Africans do that other folks don't do, including in the martial arts. There are things we do right. either that others don't do or more than. So for us, improvisation is big. But it's not all. We talked about improvisation before, right? The idea is not to improvise. Right, right. But to improvise, right. if you have to, the idea is to have an overarching plan. And then if that plan should fail or a monkey wrench is thrown in it, you improvise off of what happened. You're forced to improvise. Right. Oh, shit, that was right. a private conversation. I forgot. That wasn't people, <laughs> people who don't know our culture think it's just a culture of improvisation. Right. We just get, we just get, and, and or even black folk who don't really know our culture think we just a pro, uh, we just improvisers. Well, in jazz, you don't just improvise. You have an overarching plan of what you plan. And then something goes this way and you're able to improvise and, and get it back on track, right? You're drumming, you, you screw up, you improvise and you get back in the pocket. So it is, for us, it is have an overarching plan and then improvise if you have to. 
But if you don't understand that, it's because you don't understand our culture. You think we just some folks just doing shit willy nilly. Right. That's why you have people who say, well, I just teach myself copperware by watching. I teach myself karate by watching. Because it looks just, like you can do that. I just do it willy nilly. I just, but you don't understand <laughs> what it is. That's what we need to find out. <laughs> we don't understand what it is. Yeah, so when, when people will say, you know, uh, African martial arts uh, don't have blocks or some ignorant. Uh, I always say, well, we really don't have blocks, but we have deflections. Mm. Right. Um, and what you call a block, the only reason why that's a block is because you ain't moved your feet. You haven't gotten off the X. Good. You haven't gotten off the line. So it's a block. But if I did the same thing, I step off the line and I do that same thing, then now it brushes your hand out the way. It's a deflection based on our culture. Yeah, but bro. if you don't know that, you say, I'm doing African martial arts. He, he, because you watched karate or did karate for 10 years and now you, you black and you want to do something. You want to be African then you have to do what is our culture. Can, can I throw this rooted in footwork? If you don't root your art in footwork, and footwork is the key to all technique. If you don't do that, that basic, that's basic. That's out of the basic five principles that we have. Then your art is not indigenous African. It's something you have taken an Asian art and made it something else. There are five indigenous, I mean, five principles that we can look at and know if your martial art is indigenous. Five. If it's not fitting, meeting all five principles, then we know. We know it's not. That's an episode we got to do. We've never done an episode on the principles. I'm ready. I'm ready. Let's and do to it. point out yes. what makes your art African. Yes. And I don't care if your feelings are hurt. And how can we... Care, because you're insulting the ancestors when you claim something else. When you, when you claim... Uh, uh, and and you, your intentions may not be bad. I talk to my wife about his intentions all the time. It don't matter sometimes. I'm walking down the street. Somebody <laughs> hit me with a car. Like, oh, I didn't intend to hit you, motherfucker. I'm still hurt. That's what I try to... Intentions only matter to a certain still. point. That's so shit. intention, intention would make it hit harder because I say it's guided by intent. Right. Another one of our principles, that, but that's that's in the intermediate principles. So we have basic principles, five, five intermediate principles, five advanced principles. And people will say, what? What, really? And I tell any student that's been with me for more than two years knows all of them. They just don't know how to articulate them. But you, you, you've done it. When I brought out Discovering the War Within, I had more karate, uh, kung fu folk hit me up about it. Like, man, and they, could you break down the principles in this art? I said, you already know it. Hmm. But I'll do it. So I did it because I, I used to run. I, I had this site that I started and, and ran on when Ning was popular. Mm -hmm. uh, it was called African Martial Arts and Sciences. And we had Back then, it was astronomical. We had 10,000 folk. That was astronomical for back then. Right. Uh, and so I broke down the different arts. I, I wish I still had that article. And how, what techniques in their art fit each principle. And the movements and the mindsets fit the principles. People were loving it. Because now they can go back to their class and, and, and now they can articulate. Mm-hmm what this thing is they're doing see a lot of it is just and that's understood so knowledge is one thing you know how to do a thing wisdom is you know when to do that thing understanding is you know how to uh, articulate that thing and then if you can articulate it in your mind you have to be able to perceive it and see it right and i always say see it at different angles now you can effectively teach it and you can effectively do it and that's when you can effectively improvise, when you really understand this thing, right? 
And so that was my whole thing. Let me give them the ability to articulate because now their understanding is going to grow. A student said, well, how does understanding go just because you can articulate? I said, you don't know how to articulate it until you don't understand it yet. But now, read the book, start articulating these uh, principles, and now get back to me. And they got back to me. Now, the understanding is stronger. It makes a difference, but if you don't know that. Because if you don't know a thing, it doesn't exist. That's one of our intermediate principles. Um, can I get one more thing, man, before we before we get into it? And I'm not I'm, I'm gonna make this brief, but I got to touch on this because folks be threatening me on social media, and I gotta address it. I gotta address it real quick, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I wanna say your name, your IG name, just because I want you to know. Well, do so, do you, so. Especially okay. threatening you. Right, right. So I'm not gonna say like this. This one dude, uh, old cheddar two sharp twenty one, and I ain't gonna put all the little hyphens and whatever. If you find them, you find them. <laughs> old cheddar two sharp and Vito Steel, Vito Steel. They both brothers. Vito Steel work out. He's a weightlifter with the That's with right. the uh, with the youth. I think I see him with young people, That's big good. arms. You know, you know what I'm saying. Old Ch Ch cheddar sharp. He's his page private. I don't know what he do. But I told him I was going to speak on them. I, I went, I ain't been saying that to him. I went sitting with him and said, Hey, I'm, I'm going to talk about y'all on the show. If you want to watch, please do. Yeah, and those he, names are whack. Old Cheddar, Too Sharp, and what's the other one? Vito Steel. Vito Steel. S T E E. It sounds like a goddamn cheap uh, superhero comic book. Tony, I like the name a little bit. Oh, uh, Vito it's like Steel. A, no, I don't like that. That's, that's it's whack. It's like a UPN superhero. But anyway. Not even UPN. <laughs> that, that, you know the old, the old days with the squiggly lines? <laughs> you know, the squiggly line. So uh, there was a post recently. I don't know what the incident was, but there was an incident where a woman was assaulted and men didn't do anything. Right? Mm -hmm. And it was a controversy. And so there's a popular black page. I don't know which page this was, but they posted a woman responding to this incident and this is a this is a big pro black page i follow a few of them mm -hmm. and so they, what they posted was this woman saying look my husband ain't helping y'all if y'all ain't got no man and y'all out there getting for the don't call my husband because he got a family he got a wife that he got to look out for and i can't lose him to help one of y'all bum bitches this, this is what the woman was saying right you know hilarious oh, okay yeah, go ahead so sad so this pro-black page posted this woman. This is a man that run this page. So I commented on the page. I wasn't talking to nobody now. I one of the first people to comment. So nobody ain't saying that. I'm not going at somebody on the low. I just posted, just come out. I said, look, for men that will use a woman to speak for you in this situation, you are the worst weak bone motherfucker that can, on this planet. And, and to not, to use an excuse like that, to not defend, protect, or help a, a black woman and child, or a woman and child, you know, in a situation, I didn't even say black, mm -hmm. you know, that's some extreme shea butter shit. Mm -hmm. so, so that's what I said. Very hard, but I'm not, I'm not talking to nobody. I'm on the neutral page. So these two brothers come under my comment. Oh, coming from Vito Steele, say, oh yeah, this coming from a brother speaking in all caps. So I like, what does that insinuate? Like, I, I want to be heard. So the other dude, he comes straight out and say, you can't fight, so you can't protect no one. My lady carries a gun because it's part of her profession, and I do too, because I can. We will both, we and we both can fight. So if you're in the D.C. <laughs> area, so if you're in the D.C. area, we can meet up now. I'm fresh off work and ready to do something stupid. So, well, no, no, well, hold on real quick. Mm -hmm. Um, he said he can fight. Number one, he doesn't understand what fighting is. Fighting is an agreement between two people. So he probably can. Hey, we're going to fight. So he said meet up. Now, he he's, he already did something stupid. Saying we can meet up at work. I'm in the D.C. All right. area. All you, all you would have had to do is say, well, well, where I meet you, Chuck? Where you at? He give where he works at. You're waiting for him. When he come out the door, you slit his goddamn throat. That is the stupidest thing on earth <laughs> now you say well baba you challenge people i i certainly have and i school people know why school is but i tell them after 
Look, if this person comes into school, and I'm gonna let you know, I'm sticking them. Exactly. I'm sticking them. You think I'm gonna knuckle up with you? You, you haven't earned it. that. You haven't earned that, but you have earned this here. If you come, <laughs> do something to me, right? Well, when people threatening you, man, I was just talking about this with, with my wife and my children yesterday. People mm-hmm. threaten you online. Because people have done that to me. You know, one time I can bubble, I was like, hey, uh, you know, let me in the in the chat with him. And he going off. And I said, I can bubble out. Number one, he's saying that he ain't probably going to do shit. But if he does, just get ready to roll him up out of there because I'm going to stab the shit out of him. I'm going to shoot him. Just, that's martial arts too. But if you don't know martial arts, you think martial arts is hoi, hoi, hoi with you. And, and so you're thinking dumb shit like that. So be the mugs, they, they're, they're threatening you. One, take it serious. Take it serious. Uh, when he's saying, come to me, you ain't going to him. Don't let ego do that, right? Of course not. But if they come to you, they're not just dealing with you. Of course. So let's let, let, let's make that clear. And and so easy, easy, whatever, whatever. Fuck your names are. Shatter biscuit and cheddar biscuits and and and, 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 and steel steel buns, whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> you all, if you're threatening somebody, they have people that care about them now. Right, and that's what care about them. And I'm afraid for my life, y'all. Just so, so y'all know. And, 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 right, so it's 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 it's, it's already here that he's he fears for his life. It's here, Terrifying. so he can protect his life with deadly force. And you are coming to do something stupid. The assumption, because that makes me afraid that you're gonna take his life. I care about him, and so if I I, I got to try to help him, that means I'm scared for my life too. So now I'm scared for my life. There are other people scared for their lives or y'all too. And so he's not by himself and never will be. So I, in all my love for you, because he said, y'all brothers, please dial it back and don't do nothing stupid. Because it, it may be the very final stupid thing you ever do in your life. Can you imagine your life is defined? Your children, you said you got a wife. You, you got children. Your life is defined by I did something stupid. That's on your gravestone. He did something <laughs> stupid and died. Let's do smart shit. And this is the and thing. Not die. The thing, the last point, the point about this is so. I called the bro. I said, yo, you you on some cowardly coward shit, my brother. And that's so that's that's all I said, right? Brother jumped in my DM after that and was asking, you know, he was I I, I copy all the DMs just in case, you know what I'm saying? But you know, nigga, you a bitch in real life. I'll crush your bitch ass nigga. If you're not in the area, I'm willing to throw hands, you faggot motherfucker. Keep your name out of my you whole ass my I will dog you, my girl will dog you, I will crush you. Oh fucking God, I will kill you, slim. Stop being the internet, tough you know. So I respond back. I just said, brother, you do realize. I was commenting on a public post, wasn't talking to you. You came talking to me. I said something to you back. Now you're in my inbox threatening my life. So my point was this. you willing to kill me. That's what I said to him. So you're willing to kill me. If we meet up now, you you will kill me. And your girl, you'll risk your life. But the woman getting beat down by two brothers and you walking by, you ain't going to do shit to them. But you're willing to kill me for some shit on the internet. Nigga, get the fuck because away. Because he's not. And and also, That's, just so y'all know. You, you know. Let me just say, I don't take you serious. I don't take you serious. You but but, but do, serious. but do. Take them serious enough that if the person say, I'm so-and-so still, you you hit that motherfucker right off. I take you. I, uh, it's I, not I, about I, a conversation I, with them. So, right. um, uh. Uh, I manifesto said he's scared of his life now. He wants their names again, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's a lot of us. We we scared for our lives now, okay? So <laughs> you all, we're scared wow. now. Also, the sister when she said, you know, my husband and so and so. I pray that if anybody, I pray nobody ever harms her. But if somebody does, I pray that their brothers 
who their wives didn't think that way and that they come to her aid. Yeah, bo, yeah, bo, yeah, bo, yeah, bo. All that shit is just stupid shit. But that talk is like the fake bombers. I'm going to blow up your school at 7 o'clock today. They're not doing shit. Because <laughs> people who bomb things do not warn you ahead of time. Otherwise, uh, why bomb? They just blowing up. They're trying to kill people when they blow up. They're not so they're fucking not around shit. Co coalition. They're not fucking around coalition. We going to the, the, the stout, the motherfucking clan out at 3 o'clock on Star Wars. Right, that's some bullshit. <laughs> that's some bullshit. And even, even people when they do, so let me make this clear, internet folk. Dude says to me, I said, I said, he, they're not doing, doing anything. They're announcing their movement. They're not doing anything. Dude says to me, well, you wouldn't say that to him. You wouldn't say that to at <laughs> Grandmaster Flash, whatever his name is, right? I said, he follows me. Right. So he knows what I'm saying right now. And I put at his name, can comment for himself. But you comment for him, let me know you won't do shit. He didn't say nothing else. And of course, Grandmaster Flash didn't come in and say nothing. But Grandmaster Flash pointing pistol so uh rifle so-called at the FBI bullshit. Yeah, that was bullshit. Crazy. Don't believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. Don't risk your life, officer. That's a beautiful name, though. Not fucking around, coalition. I love, I love it. it. I love it too. I love I, it because I hate that they do. I'm, I'm, I'm not fucking around. We need to take it over, bro. I love that. <laughs> we need to take that shit over. Man, yeah, we should just take it. We, we really not fucking around. Just, in fact, this this is no longer warrior class. <laughs> <laughs> not fucking around. We just got not fucking around. We just got you know the warrior we class. Mad, uh, 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 <laughs> dare to be mad as shit. Because we'll get flagged and they'll be taking black power media. And, and, oh, and then our first guest be Charleston White, just for Jerry. <laughs> now, Charleston White, uh, there's a uh, a clip, I think from yesterday. I gotta I gotta check it out. You know, I I don't I don't I don't I don't rock with Charleston White myself. But anyway, whatever happened to that guy who oh not fucking around coalition? Supposedly he yeah. got arrested for pointing guns at the FBI. He's probably on a island somewhere sipping Mai Tai yeah. with yeah. the FBI. Yeah. You don't get arrested for pointing a gun at the Fed. You get shot for pointing. Yeah, you, your ass or, or your ass dies on the way to prison. Yeah, you don't get arrested. Let's stop that. that. Let's <laughs> stop that. That's why I must be screaming. I did not commit suicide because they know these motherfuckers will do you. Yes. Yes. You didn't point a gun at them. You didn't made them embarrassed. Oh, we were driving and, and we actually we slipped. The car slipped. We turned <laughs> over. Ain't nobody even driving the car. They got that motherfucker mm -hmm. automatic and made it flip mm -hmm. over. You dead in that motherfucker. So mm -hmm. I, I ain't no telling where he at. He probably somewhere with. Uh, I was about to say something. I, I'm not gonna say I want to get us. We live. We live, Bobby. I was about to say an oh, old boy who was trafficking young girls who supposedly died in prison. Oh, Epstein. Right. Uh, I, was, I wasn't going to say his name. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he probably somewhere sipping my ties with that certain person. Mm. Oh, yeah. On an mm. island somewhere because he may not be dead either. Right. But if, they, if, if, if he is dead, hey, I said, damn, dead either. I hope Grandmaster Flash ain't dead. I like his music. <laughs> Speaking of that, he was selling a mixed board thing too. That's how he music. started. And, and he was, and that was a scam. Right, and that was a scam. That's how he first got started by scamming hip hop. That's oh. if people don't know. That's why I know who he is, and he always been a scammer. You know what I'm saying? So now, let, let so we're gonna get to it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, I did want to throw something in uh, mm -hmm. when we were talking about uh, indigenous people earlier. I manifesto or El manifesto mentioned uh, Killers of the Flower Moon. I don't know how many people have seen. I haven't seen that. I, I got to see that. Yeah, I've well, seen I it. I can't do it. Um, yeah, <laughs> it, it was, I, a friend of mine took me to the movies because of uh, my birthday. And um, I wanted to see the movie, but I, I spent, the, I would say, the, probably the first third of the movie kind of angry. Just, uh, and you'll see when you watch it, like, uh, it's very bold. It's, it's very bold, <laughs> the things that they show. So, but that's I would what they recommend. Do. That's yeah. what they do. They, they show it you. Is. This is what we did, just right. like this. It is. See, I, I love, I love, I love white Native American love. So I, I got to see it. You know, 
Yeah, I mean, you, you'll you see love, what it actually is. It ain't love. It's just it's exactly what they did, what we were just talking about early, with the, just so they well, can take some pictures. It, 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 now, for real, for me, I don't, I probably won't see it if I do. It, if somebody has a discussion on it, I watch it for that. Uh, I don't like seeing trauma of yeah. black Native That's Americans, right. any oppressed people. I don't, I don't like seeing our trauma. That's why I won't watch it. Um, it's entertainment. I that, that's some bullshit. Like slave movies, and I, yeah. I, I haven't seen enough of them. I, I don't like trauma. I, you know, well, unless the slave is fighting back. Now I, I can get with that. Slave fight back, right. kill, Rebe- kill a bunch of motherfuckers. I, yeah. I can get with that. Yes, yeah. but, but just being a slave, I know mean, the chief was talking. So, oh, he's seen it. You know, some Epstein had a white partner that was hooking him up. Now I think I don't think that was his wife, Gate Guy G- Guyland. Whatever her name is, with Epstein, I don't think that was his wife. That was his hitter. I we think do, we do understand what the whole island thing was, right? It was just a, it was just a what, what they call that. How you? I forgot what it's called. A, a honey pot? Is that what it is called, Bob? No, a honey pot is a move where somebody uses sex to get you in a vulnerable position and, and kill your ass or take from you or whatever. So uh, it's kind of like that then. So I think basically all it was was he was setting oh to get shit on people, right? Gov- he oh, was doing yeah. it for Israel, getting 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 government officials, big time entertainers fucked up on that. film and camera for Israel. That's what that's what it looks like to me. That that'd be gangster, that'd be gangster, wicked and gangster. She that's was his gangster. bottom bed. Uh, he, the PDF. I've never now the the book? bottom. So the bottom for a pimp. Is the one that runs the other right? He's right. That's what Griselda, whatever her name is, Griselle Max something. He's, he's no Galen, Galen Matt, whatever. You're right. Well, she so she wasn't the bottom because he wasn't really well. I guess you could say that, but these yeah, were prost- pimp- prostitutes choose to be right hoes. Right. He was kidnapping girls and forcing them. So they were in, he was an enslaver. She Children, was always there. Boys too. Don't forget. I didn't know the island boys, them crazy looking white boys with all the tattoos oh, on their face. No, man, that's not no. No, for real. That's for real. The they island boys. They, they on the island. No, they were raised on that island. That's a fact. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's a fact. The only the only mug that that uh did more of that kind of insidious. Uh, using is Walt Disney and his folks. Yeah, Galen Maxwell. That's right. Yes. Now I, I, I won't say Walt with Disney. Them Island Boys. My daughter walked. My daughter worked at at Disney World, and she would say she was a chef there. She she left and 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 came here. That's what brought her. She moved here with us. Uh, now she's back in Chicago, but. She would call. I gotta leave. I, I'm I'm so lonely here. She'd be crying and stuff. And uh, she said she would see, like, children. You know, like uh, adolescent, twelve or, or whatever. And some worker there would be, you know, talking with them. And you know, let me get a group photo with all you guys. And they let let's take a photo over here. She said. And then you you see parents running around looking for their child. So I'm not saying that Disney took them. You're right. Somebody took them, and, and and you know I can imagine going to Disney World. That's a place where abductors probably be lurking anyway. Well, there's a few hotels around Disney that are being low key not talked about, but on trial for them finding tunnels and everything in there. Wow. So that that's a big thing going on in the hotel industry. They found tunnels, connections, and all that. Stuff. They're not talking about that. Uh, a girl here got abducted, and she was found. I want to say a week later, where they had a line of folks lining up at the door. That's how the police saw. Like, what is it line out here? It was a line going all along the balcony, waiting to rape this girl. Wow! And she got one of the dudes who's trying to rape her phone and call for help. So those cops were already there looking, and they heard mm-hmm. the call, and so, and so they went up there. And then other cops came, and uh, they arrested as many as they could come. Of course, some folks started running their ass off at that point. They grabbed a bunch of them and they got it was three girls, I think, in there. They got them, you know, saved. 
Uh, this is in Atlanta. Happy birthday, Kalanji. I forgot to shout. We forgot to shout Kalanji. Oh, yeah, yeah so Kalanji's birthday is, is uh, December 5th. So uh, shout out to our brother Comrade. Uh, for his birthday. And Ominiki, when was your birthday? You just mentioned in October. Right. I also, <laughs> so she mentioned her birthday because, I, and I think we did say it on, on one of these shows, happy birthday. So, Thank but you. if not, happy, happy <laughs> way related birthday. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the next birthday coming up is, you. is, is my wife's. Okay, I was just wondering if you were going to say that. And we partying. I'm sorry. I'm not stupid to not mention her, right? It's my <laughs> wife, December 15th. Uh, so we're going to try to, you know, party on here and everywhere else for that. December 16th, my daughter, Abiola. We got oh, some. Yeah. January 27th is Okikiola. That's the little baby who's, you know, made her appearance here. And then one of the greatest, if not the greatest, I'll, I'll say one of the greatest because Malcolm X was assassinated on this day, so I won't say the greatest. But one of the greatest days in the history of man is February 21st. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and that is my birthday. Now, Kalanji left, uh, uh, not Kalanji. No uh, Malcolm X was assassinated February 21st, 1965. I was born February 21st, 1963. Mm. So I can never forget that was the day of his assassination because it's you know uh the day of my birth. And now we can never forget your birthday because it was the day of my birthday. <laughs> right. So people say they forgot the birthday, they 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 be yesing. They be uh, so uh because you can't forget my birthday uh, unless you don't know nothing about Malcolm. Yes. My daddy's birthday was was February the first, the first day of black history, and I ain't know it till I was till I was 35 years old. Wow. I wouldn't uh, try to remember. Must be. I don't know what I was. Well, I'll be asking. I know all the uh, all the students' birthdays, right? Nice. But I asked except some of the children. But uh, I asked uh, students when my birthday. I had to say that shit about ten times to be late. <laughs> he said February twenty uh, eighth. <laughs> Listen, said, no. if you don't know, I didn't go. I said, God damn, it's only 28 or 29 days in February. You got I, it the 32nd. I didn't grow up celebrating birthdays. I don't remember nobody's birthday but my right. mama and my daughters. I didn't <laughs> grow up celebrating birthdays either. Huh? <laughs> and I remember people's birthdays. That is terrible. Wait, you grew Thank up with your whole winter too? Uh, Jerm, I'm actually 27. Uh, <laughs> but I'll let you know what it's like to be 29 in the <laughs> Thank so you. you grew up, you grew up a uh, uh, witness to Jehovah too. Me? <laughs> yes. Wow, y'all be witnessing Jehovah. A witness to Jehovah. <laughs> a witness. All right, so we gonna uh, get into it. Shout out to the Jehovah Witnesses. Hey, you, I was bro. talking about Jehovah Witnesses yesterday. Like, man, I gotta have some Jehovah Witnesses around me because <laughs> they can build an ad onto my house. So <laughs> they, they, they do that. <laughs> Uh, my my boy, uh, his mother, he has a martial arts school. His mother is a Jehovah Witness, and she expanded his school. It was just a, a, a basically a warehouse. She got that mug popping. Oh, okay. I'm like, damn. I said, so when you going to do my school? Well, it's going to cost. Oh, no, no. We ain't talking cost now. We ain't talking. We ain't talking pay now. I love it too much. No, no. I've mean, been, I've participated in one of those builds. A lot of times, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses build their own kingdom hall. Like they, they do. Have yeah. Foundation. They do. And then they teach you how to do everything. They taught my mom how to do electrical. Like, hey, yeah. Besides the yeah, actual. Did y'all learn how to build houses in, in Epa? I'm like, well, you can invite me to your house to build. <laughs> it gonna hey. fall down. But besides, hey, besides like the religion, the religiously part, <laughs> I'm just messing. <laughs> besides the religiously part, the religiously part, part, I can get yeah. all the yeah. other shit they do. I'm with it. I'm with the other shit. Uh, I can teach you to build a shrine. Yes. Uh, rest in power, comrade, veteran, Black Panther, Ed Poindexter. Oh, uh, rest in power. Man. Uh, how seriously, how old is Omaniki? You know, we're not doing that. You don't ask a woman that. I need to know I'm not a creep. You, you're you not doing that. Well, okay, she, she, for, for you, you don't know, like my music, she's 16. So, uh, um, yeah, won't do that. Please, please, pre, pre, presente brother Poindexter. Yes, mm. Mumbiza. Okay, uh, so we're gonna get into it. Yes, sir. Um, do how it. do you multiply? So, this is. 
multiplicity, multiples, and multipliers. So how do you multiply your fighting ability or the severity of your actions in a self-defense situation? We'll force multiplier. If you never heard that term, well, what's a force multiplier? It's a self-defense uh, tool that dramatically increases the effectiveness of a technique or movement. It's a self-defense tool that dramatically increases the effectiveness of a technique or movement. Okay, Force multipliers are often justified when a disparity of force exists. And we're going to deal with that later, disparity of force deeper. But a disparity of force is defined as a situation that any reasonable person would conclude places you at an overwhelming disadvantage in your effort to protect yourself against immediate and serious bodily injury. Uh, we like to think that's every violent encounter you're in, right? Because you're placed at an overwhelming disadvantage in your effort to protect yourself against immediate and serious bodily injury. I'm walking down the street. My mind ain't on violence. People say, I woke up and chose violence. Well, that's, that's really weird to me. <laughs> because I don't wake, wake up and say, man, I'm going, just going to be violent today. Ah! I will snap off verbally. <laughs> I, I don't mind being oh, violent, really? but... I don't like it, and I so I don't wake up saying I'm gonna be violent today. And and let's let's not uh, also let's not do the shea butter social media thing of everything is violence that is <laughs> aggression either. Um, I'm not for aggressiveness. I'm for being proactive and being assertive. So I'm for assertiveness. So I wake up saying I'm going to be assertive every day. Yeah, Aggressive, really? no. Violent, absolutely not. So you're walking down, and most people, no, they don't wake up saying I'm going to be, I'm, I choose violence. That's some old, once again, social media, uh, shea butter shit. That person who says that is not going to be violent. They ain't choosing violence. Get the hell out of here. So walk outside, but there are people who have chosen violence. You ain't chosen. you walking down the street. The average good person. And somebody who chose violence said, I'm going to take his shit. I like that sweater. I'm going to take that shit off of him. And instead of just saying, hey, old nigga, give me your sweater. Because somebody walks up to me and said, hey, old nigga, give me your sweater. I'm giving him my sweater because, damn, they bold and they probably, you know, a little nuts. And I don't want to get hurt. So they could take my sweater. Unless it is below zero and it takes the sweaters for me to die, well, now they got to take it off me. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to make that easy. So all they got to do is say, hey, old nigga, give me the sweater. I give them the sweater. Why you got to beat me up and take my sweater? <laughs> right? So you, that you had a disparity of force because you chose to be happy. I'm probably walking out. I'm probably skipping down the street and shit. Holding mm -hmm. my, my wife's hand. We skipping and shit. Looking at the, <laughs> looking at the, uh, the, the dolphins <laughs> swim in the lake behind our house, you know, the shit like that, right? <laughs> so it's just happy, we just happy, and then Muzz come over, and so that shocks us for a second. We we're shocked, we can't. Oh my god! And that's when they can strike. So we had a disparity of force. So if I pull out a knife or a pistol or something, it's because it's a disparity of force. I was at an overwhelming disadvantage. Because I just wanted to skip around with the wife. You know, the children going around me and the wife, their hands together, and they circling around us and shit. And the, the dolphins just jumping in the back of the lake and the rainbow go over. That's what we like. <laughs> but then somebody come up want to do. So they didn't throw us off guard, right? So we're the disparity of force. That's a disparity of force. So you're always at a disparity of force because you were trying to be peaceful when you went out. Everybody understand that, yeah, right? Man. You trying to be peaceful. You on this level, somebody coming at you on here. So it's, that's right, cool. always, always. The, you're always the lamb. Always. <laughs> so somebody come, you know, they're the lion. The lamb's in danger. Disparity of force. So a reasonable person would conclude play uh would conclude that you are at an overwhelming disadvantage in your effort to protect yourself against immediate and serious bodily injury. Understanding force force multipliers, so force multipliers come to play. 
and when to use them will help you prevail when the odds are against you. Yes. There's an infinite amount of force multipliers, ranging from weapons and tactics all the way to variations in how self-defense techniques are executed. If you're serious about self-defense, have force multipliers with you at all times. If you have to defend yourself, a disparity of force will probably exist, as we just talked about. Think about it. Criminals look for easy targets, those they perceive as weaker than themselves. We mm -hmm. talked about that. A perception perceives action. Absolutely. Oh, excuse me. Uh, examples of force multipliers are readily available. Impact weapons first. Impact weapons are probably the most readily available in our everyday environments. An example would be making a fist and hammering an attacker with a nose in the nose with it. That hammer fist would be a much more would be much more effective if you picked up a stapler and pounded the attacker in the face with the edge of the stapler protruding from your fist. Look around your environment. Impact weapons can be utilized as force multipliers. Excuse me. Impact weapons that can be utilized as force multipliers are plentiful. The key is to be aware of their existence before you need them. Edge weapons. Knives are usually the first thing that comes to mind when thinking of edged weapons. Knives are frightening and intimidating, and a lot of people are not comfortable around them. Again, Look around your environment and you will see a lot of sharp objects. Keys utilizes as weapons can easily blind and cut an assailant. Pens and pencils can be used with devastating results if driven into appropriate targets. Firearms. Firearms are probably one of the most effective force multipliers. Fully understand laws regarding the use of force and responsibility of being legally armed citizen before you carry, of being a legally armed citizen. Excuse me. Pepper spray. If I could carry only one non lethal force multiplier, it would be pepper spray. And look into pepper gel also. That's pretty uh, common now. Nothing is effective all the time, but pepper spray is effective most of the time. Pepper spray is inexpensive, affordable, and easy to deploy. Tactics. To be careful in deploying in a closed space. <laughs> right. And that's thus the gel because it, that, 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 that comes right. with all that comes with training, knowing when to use these things. Yeah, you right. absolutely. And lastly, tactics. Tactics are arguably the most important tool when it comes to self-defense. Even with tools. It is superior tactics that will help you get the tool into the fight. You may need to distract the attacker or simply reposition your body to effectively bring a full force multiplier into play. Force multipliers are the great equalizer in a dangerous situation, especially when you are outnumbered, overmatched in strength or ability, or caught in a disadvantage. And I'm sorry, I have yes. something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know that we're always bringing up television shows, um, but, you know, that's for a reason. And there's one show that I've been watching um, that has come out recently. It's called Fargo. I don't know if, if anyone oh, yeah. is uh, mm -hmm. into watching Fargo, but there's been about four episodes so far. But if you want to see Force Multipliers, yeah. Then watch the first few episodes <laughs> of, of Fargo for this season because they're and tactics, the use of tactics. Oh, you yeah. will see, like it. I mean, it's really a trip, it, and it's very entertaining to, to think of what's this person going to think of next to to try to defend themselves. And we are going to do a, a show on like booby trapping and stuff like that, right? Too. Yeah. So that's coming soon. Uh, I'm just looking at the comments, and I see here. Mm. I don't, you don't like my music, just have something you can pull out that will make an attacker think twice. So like, like we always say, be careful when you, so you say just like, mm -hmm. all you need, that's all, just, just do this and you'll be, so let me ask you, you don't like my music real quick. What are you going, what do you suggest that you can pull out that's going to make an attacker think twice before you answer that? 
how do you know what's going to make the attacker think twice? Do you know what the attacker mindset is? Do you know his skill level? Do you know what do you know about the attacker that you're gonna pull out a flash? Like, oh! you pull out the knife. Like, oh! No, I know, I know what to make him think twice. Who's that? If you pull out the knife and then actually use that motherfucker, that's <laughs> right. Uh, if, yeah, if, no, I tell you what. Music said he had a corkscrew. I tell you what. Pull the corkscrew yeah. out and then stag yourself, take yourself like that. I'm gonna think twice. You pull that the twice too. Hit yourself a couple of times in your chest. I'm gonna think twice. But the so, key is, it has to be used. Right. So don't, yeah, it's not either on just, them or yourself. I prefer to use it on them instead of you know. If I pull yeah. out a pistol, I really prefer to use it on them than myself. So the key too, if you pull it out, yeah, use it. Can. If you're not going to use it, don't, don't pull, pull it out. It. Don't just have something to make somebody think twice because you don't know what's going to make somebody yeah, because, think twice. What is so that? So that that is. Either a threat or intimidation, depending on how you wield it and what you say. If you say, take another step and I'm going to stab you, that's an intimidation. <laughs> that, that, that lets a person who is trained know the condition is don't take another step forward. You ain't going to stab me. So you really don't want to stab me. Right. So you ain't for this shit. <laughs> you, ain't for this, you ain't for the streets right now. <laughs> Use it. So you know, step back while I'll shoot that that person. You just don't step back. You say, you don't want to shoot me because they right. don't. I didn't see you pull. I didn't know they. I don't. Um, I don't want to shoot them because you gave an intimidation. Right. I didn't see people pull their pistol out when somebody was walking towards them. All right, now. Right. Say, what you gonna do? Put that pistol for a slap. Shit out. Slap. Right. Because you no. Know, now yeah. pull that mug out, and you got to know the difference. Pull it out, and they point and said, "Man, I'm about to put a hole in your chest." That, that was there was no condition there. Right. You better get ready to move, and then you keep stepping forward like it's a video of the dude. He gets shot, and now he oh oh what well fool. This man is pointing the, the gun, and he looks like okay, he really is about to shoot me, and he shoots you. He didn't give you no condition. Don't come. Don't you take another point, step. Bro. Leave me alone. He do, and you don't. So if you're gonna be like leave me alone, you don't have to pull nothing to say that. Right. I. I'm but if you just, pull it, use it. I'm not, not going to use people it. to go around stabbing people with a court scoop. Right. You're not telling, we, we, we're asking you not to tell people nothing on the chat. That's what we're saying. So when you say just have something, like, just just don't. That's all we ask. Anyway, right. Keep... right. And so, and, and, and so we're teaching that that's that's for you too. Don't, if you're not going to pull it, I mean, if you're not going to use it, don't pull it. Yeah. I'm not and gonna... no, you didn't go around telling people, but you know, people do. Take advice for shit. You ain't oh, then, shit. okay. So we have a chat so you can communicate, not so you can give people advice you don't know what the fuck you're talking about, bro. So that's why we got a chat. So so you can communicate, not so you can give people advice, not knowing what you're talking about. So that's why we have a chat. Don't don't get slick, my nigga. I mean, excuse me. I'm about to come out of cap. I'm about to come right. in cap. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> disparity of force. Say we're gonna get you know, more into that. Means that in a physical fight initiated by the other person. The likelihood of you being crippled or killed is so great that this advantage on the opponent's part becomes the equivalent of a deadly weapon. So don't feel guilty. And, and, and a good lawyer, if you had to have a lawyer, can handle that, right? This person. So if, like when my mother was at the church and the dude attacked, my mother's in a wheelchair. And when he attacked her, she was, I think, about 88. She's 92 now. But so she was in her 80s at the time. He was a man, big man, grabbed this woman who weighs about 140 pounds in the wheelchair, paralyzed on fully on the left side of her body. And he grabs it. Well, that's a disparity of force. He's a deadly weapon to her. He could slam on the ground and kill her, right? So that's the equivalent of a deadly weapon. So somebody could use a deadly weapon on him and they're justified. Okay. If you got to deal with justification in your in your head, I ain't got to justify shit when it comes, especially you grab my mama, my mama, my wife, my children. I ain't got to justify a goddamn thing. I'm fucking you up. <laughs> and somebody I knew was there. 
He said, if I had known it was your mama that got involved, man, it's anybody mama. I am not going to be sitting nowhere and some Mark grabs me up a woman, especially an elder woman, out of a wheelchair, and I don't do nothing. And look and say, man, if that was Belay's mama, I'd jump to it. Right. Hey, they, they ain't Belay's mama. So, <laughs> well, I hope you're all right. Man, get your ass out of here. Right. And you I told the person just like that. Post the video and say, what? my son better not be out here protecting women. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, exactly. Yeah, now that'd be crazy. My mama, my son better not be out here right. protecting these women out here that get snatched up and smacked around by these dudes. You know, that kind of shit, like, hell no. So, and my mother was terrified. She only had one hand to protect herself against this big dude who grabbed her. So it was crazy. Uh, and the security all them, they standing back there looking. Is he serious? Is he serious? That's why if you weak, particularly if you're a man and you weak like that, you need uh, women. No, men. I, I can't speak on what women need. Only women can speak on that. Men, if you weak like that, you need to be smacked up a little bit. You need to be smacked up a little bit to let yeah, just a little bit, just a little bit, okay. woman, just, just a little bit. I said it. <laughs> said it now um so the spirit of force that person is considered a deadly weapon themselves and if the other elements are present it warns you shooting or stabbing them to defend yourself some examples of the spirit of force include small person versus big person okay omenigi versus i can that's a huge disparity of force okay yeah bro Male versus female. Well, in that, and I, you know, man versus woman. We talked about female last week, but I'm just using that because that's boy and girls too, right? If you're larger, some people say, "Well, girls are a lot of times stronger than boys." It's time to teach them younger why they're young. Don't put your hands on a woman, on a girl or woman. Um, I had one student. Tell me, you know, I didn't mind putting my hands on girls, you know, till I got much older. It was, you know, I didn't mind whooping them and this and that. I'm like, well, that's because you weren't taught properly. You weren't taught properly. There were no men to teach you properly, and that's why. Right. Um, unarmed versus armed. Trained versus untrained. That's a disparity of us. Usually you don't know that one. For me, everybody I meet more trained than me. That's the assumption I make. One versus many. So if it's one versus many, three people talking about beating your ass, you're justified in pulling on them. Especially in Atlanta, shit. Two people, you know, shit. One person in, in a lot of situations. Uh, in Atlanta, if a person is sitting in your car, you didn't invite them, they in your car, like going through your shit, trying to take your stuff and stuff. You can shoot them. Atlanta's off the chain with it now. But it works to our advantage. You know. Uh, so imagine you have a small person, you have like Omaniki against Akin Bovala. Omaniki just skipping around. She she came over to the house and she's she's skipping in our backyard. We didn't know we looked out the one who saw her skipping back there. Right? As I frequently do. Right, she frequently does because she likes to, to see the dolphins swimming in the lake back there. Right? So she's skipping around once again, skipping around our fire pit and shit. Uh, even lit the fire pit. I'm like, what, what is she doing? But hey, it's only Nikki, so go ahead and let her do her thing. So she back there, and then I can mobilize cousin who bigger than him, weigh 300 pounds of muscle. He come up, she, aye, aye. I don't know what you being back here, homie Nikki. And he been threatening, and he come over to fight. That's a male versus female, small person versus big. He's six seven, three hundred fifty pounds of muscle, uh, point five percent body fat. So he's huge, like the Hulk or something. And he got a baseball bat in his hand, and you were skipping. You ain't got nothing but the lighter to light the fire pit. So you just skipping around. And you dropped the lighter because you shot when he came. So. You're unarmed versus armed. Now, you're trained, but he trained my father. So he really, he way more trained than you. 
So yeah, that also means he's like 70 though. Mm-hmm. No, 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 no. He, he's he's 20, he's 26. Okay. So he also time travels. So he got yeah, a whole right. so he got a whole another uh skill set that you don't have, right? He's like a Highlander. And so he's like one versus many because each of his from each time they can come and fight you too. So you got all these things. You gonna bring up your fist to box all of his uh, different aspects? No. Definitely. But you pull out the blicky <laughs> and start busting on them. See, then the other side going back in time and shit. You know, they, they out of here. They go back in time and they, they tell my father, hey, uh, teach your son when he has a student on me, Nikki, to come in to, to break her leg for me because she shot my aspect from 1932. See, that, that kind of thing, right? Father, wow, this is a book. Mm. <laughs> well, you know, that's how that's how books happen. You start so <laughs> so you can use a force multiplier. You got me? Now, force multipliers are the great equalizer against any disparity of force, especially when you are outnumbered, out overmatched in strength or ability, or caught at a disadvantage. Person throws you on the ground, they mount you. Right. I ain't talking about sexual, I'm talking about mounting, like they straddle your legs with their knees. That's mounting. They mount you, and they're about to punch you in the face. You had a, a disadvantage, right? That's caught at a disadvantage. Well, while they got you there, I've, I've trained them. There are places you can pull a tool from if somebody does that. And you hit them. I remember a brother from Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu who came to the class, and I did that. And he's looking, I know in his mind, like, well, that's not honorable. That, that's silly thinking. That's not honorable. It's at a disparity of force. I'm 55. He was in his 20s. Muscular. That Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu brother who came that time. Mm-hmm. Muscular. He yeah. quit. Deadly yeah. on the ground. Oh, he's deadly. Could have been a great wrestler. And I stabbed him up. Not, not, I ain't talking about the saw we I ain't talking about him. <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, I'm talking about the young dude who came to train or die. Oh, right, right, right. Wait a minute, yeah. you said you, you stabbed him up, bro. You didn't stab yeah, him up. Yeah, he, he mounted me when we were training knots. Oh, right. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. he didn't really stab him, y'all. This no, I ain't really stabbed. No, 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 no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. I wouldn't have said that on here. No, I stabbed him with a training knife, y'all. <laughs> In the middle point, of class. You know? <laughs> no, I, 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 I forgot how that sound. They're like, damn, why I stabbed him up? FBI sitting there like, <laughs> He's sending the message. <laughs> uh, so force multiplier, that's the great equalizer, right? And I always tell them it's a great equalizer. You know, know when the disparity of force is working against you. Familiarize yourself with the use of force laws in your area and know when using a force multiplier is justified. And remember, the best force multiplier, force multiplier, is useless if it isn't readily accessible. Okay. So Force multipliers, we're going to give you some examples of, and they, they will strike Bob with uh, the ones they have there. First force multiplier, and most people have these, the, the two, the first two I'm going to show. Flashlight. You have seen me with the flashlight. Uh, get yourself a metal flashlight. It can be this one or, b can you bring up yours? Well, the smaller the giant. The big one and the small one. You can bring up both. This is a load right here. I got different kinds of small, but this is just for my. Now, head. if you look at that, uh, show them the belt. That I think that has a crenellated bevel, doesn't it? The small one or the big one? The small. One. The small one, uh, not this one. My other one does. This is just a fist okay, load. So, so that, that that's still a force multiplier. You hit with no. that. This has a crenellated bevel, so that you can tear skin too. But even if it's a smooth one, you can still boom hitting with that. And it's in your hand, so you say you're right. boxing, right? And then you throw a hammer fist. This is right there. It's natural. Okay. That's force multiplier. Um, you all have seen me pull a karambe, but that's not like common, the most common. But that that if I punch the the, the edge is coming out here, I hit. Um in January, we'll be able to show you our knives again, and we'll explain why we haven't been able to show you not. But the most another common tool is i show you my favorite after I show you this one. So this is the claw hammer. Most people have this. Yeah, bro. Mugs attacking you and 
you know, this happens to be in your car because you're going to do some, you know, make some, uh, uh, something for some some of the neighborhood children, maybe make a uh, well, make a birdhouse or something. It's in your car. You, you grab that. Somebody wants to do your violence. Boom. You out back uh, outside my house skipping around. And if you come to my house, you got to skip. You got to come to my house. You got to be skipping. Skip around the fire pit. Watch the dolphin swim in the, in the lake. Now, you know, we had a dolphin in that mother. That'd be dope. But, uh, you, had, you had swan, herons. I thought, you, I thought y'all was the only people who had freshwater dolphins on this side of the uh Atlantic. Well, we have a freshwater dolphin, but he's not back there. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, we, we keep him at the pool at the uh rec center. Gotcha, gotcha, good. Okay. And who gonna tell him to get out? So, you know, so, so once we threw him in there, we knew he was in there for the, forever. But you can use this uh this way, you can use it this way. Uh if you go back and look at our class with the hammer. You'll see the different ways. You could use the hammer like this to, to hit with the stick, the shaft in, you know, hit or poke with the staff, uh, shaft. So that is that hammer. Uh, I like the stubby hammer. The stubby, I love it. I can walk around, you really don't see it. And then when I start using that stubby, even if I hit it like this as a fist load, you hit harder, right? Or I can hold it back this way. Boom, and it hits harder. Okay. Rick across the face, different things you can do. Or I can just rake across, hold it this way. Rick across the face, things of that nature, right? You got to know how to hold it so you don't hurt your own hand. Or, you know, this way. Right? Sports multiplier. It's great. Love the stubby. So that's a stubby hammer. And you can get these things. I think stubby. The, the, the regular hammer, you can get a hammer for a dollar. The stubby, you can get probably for about mm, four or five dollars, maybe. Something like that. I have about mm, 20 hammers, something like that. Because I like to I like to do a lot of you know carpentry work. <laughs> so those are those. Anybody got a magazine? You got a magazine? Hold on, real quick. Let me let. Oh, you're talking about the paper kind? Paper magazine. Or we not not the yeah. pistol magazine. Or A B. Excuse me, y'all. Bring me a magazine out of uh out of my room, please. It should be over there by my backpack. A magazine like, you know, cosmopolitan or something. Any magazine, <laughs> doesn't matter what. I don't think she even know what cosmopolitan is. Do they even still have to sell that? Uh, I don't know if they have a cosmopolitan. So, with a magazine. I got a real thin magazine. Yeah, it, it can't be too thin or it just bleh. Let me see. I put two together. Oh, yeah, that works. So, roll it up. Yes. So, roll. So, take your uh, folks watching too. Roll up your magazine. Roll it tight. If you can, you can put a rubber band on it or something to just keep that with you if you want to. I used to have one in my backpack, but it got used so much it got shredded. So, this magazine like this, you can hold it this way and hit, do not hit like this with the shaft <laughs> bar. Now, that will just could distract the person, but you got to throw down after. This here, boom, I'm not going to hit myself in the arm like that. That could, that could break my arm. So use the rolled up end, and you can hold it in the middle and use both sides, right? So hit Bob, roll it up, hold it, and hit Bob with that. Mug. Hold it in the middle and hit Bob with it. Just so y'all can see. Hit him in his in face, yeah. yeah. Just while we're going there, right up and up in the neck. In, this, in, in the soft parts, it's good, or in his nose, or you know, towards his eye. You don't aim for the eye, but you, you know, for his face, his arms, this. I'm saying, hit the livery system, the liver, right? Solar plexus, see, so groin, right? You can do a lot of damage with the rotor magazine if that's all you got. Down, up, boop, boop, boop. Right. If that's all you got. That's all you got. So you can use the rolled up magazine. You see all you see of what this happens. Kind of 
just kind of folded it right here. It's not, but it's still there, there right? The yeah, it made it harder. There. Actually, it made it harder for a minute. You know, a little you bit harder. Use, so you can use a magazine at least through one fight. Yep. With multiple folks before the integrity breaks down, and I guess, and and Bob harder than a, a human being. A human being more squishy. Yeah, and this is a and this is a thin mag. If it was a bigger mag, it'd be a lot heavy. I never thought about this, Bob. That's that's a good unconventional tool right there. You can hit hard, I'm hitting hard. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you can use that. People aren't pulled as much by the television shows that portray police and medical jobs. Right, so, so you can use that. So we got right now we got hammer, flashlight. And we have Road Up Magazine. Then we can go to the, so those are impact weapons, like Omniki talked about. Uh, we can go to the sharp weapons, like the knife. So we know what that can do. Got a corkscrew. Corkscrew, right. When we talked about the corkscrew. Um, that can do you damage, right? That can stab, rake across the face. Keys. Now, let me say something about keys. Yeah, Be man. Be careful. Bring me, bring me a, 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 a set of... No, I got a set of keys. I'm fine. So. Now, keys for self-defense. I'm going to make a... Say something about this. Uh, that people teach this, this BS. And they're teaching it. It is BS. That teacher run from. They teach you to put the keys between your fingers no. and hit like you Wolverine or something. That's going to tear your fingers up. Yep. And as your fingers tear up and it's tearing the meat off, believe me, you're not going to be fighting as much. You're, the integrity of your strikes go down because your shit is hurt. Yeah. But what you can do is take one key and work across the person's face. Yes. Things of that nature. If you have a car key, if you have a car key you can actually push that through skin but you got to be trained enough uh there was a person i was talking to an attorney and she had a case where the husband and wife were just arguing over the car keys he had the keys in his hand the fob she's grabbing it and he's like give me the keys and he said, no, I'm taking the car. And she lets go, and he comes forward accidentally and stabs her in the guts. It's sad, but she's telling me the story. I'm thinking, ooh, shit. You can thrust that. You know, that's terrible. I know that's terrible. I'm thinking, shit. You know, I said, I I, I say, where, where in the stomach did he hit her? Because I'm trying to figure, okay, where did he get at? You know, what was the damage level? But uh, she said, you know, she she's all right and, and he's all right uh but he was arrested he went to jail we was having um, a whoa we and they, about, they together they together after because that was yeah. it was an accident he only went to jail for i think like 90 days or something but because it was an accident um but that's just to let you know you can use that and you can definitely poke towards the eyes i got enough i've seen this dude um we were well, not seen him we was all fighting it was like a neighborhood fight or whatever and the one, it was one guy had the key sideways like this, had his fist on the key and had it like this. And the person he was fighting hit his fist and the key went through his jaw. I'll never forget that. He was and that's what you have to, that's why training yeah. is key. So training yeah. is key. Ha ha. <laughs> you do like this. Uh, you know, this, this here, I always slap people's hands. They right. go across the bridge and now I can really tear you up. Uh, I tell people don't be crunchy. So if you like this with your with your tool, and you'll be able to see it better with this. Imagine this is a knife in your hand, and now you like this, holding it up. Right. Obviously, don't be crunchy with your hands. Person still crunchy. I say you got a knife. Don't be crunchy. Don't be crunchy. Period. They got. I slap that towards their face. I say, that was your eye. You lost your eye. Right. That's why we lead. We put the tool in the lead hand instead of holding it back here. And then this hand is back here. This hit a protein. Yeah. Ready to work. Uh, it's it's not up here either. Normally, if you're empty-handed, this hand is here. But he's got to get past this to punch you in your face. Right. And especially if it's a blade, that, that is a losing notion, right? 
So, but do not ever have your hand like this. I, I've seen people, you know, they'd be like this. Special forces swipe like this, you're a damn lie. You're a damn lie. I don't know where you got that from. Probably a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, you're doing all, you know, do to the number mm -hmm. one way, the best way to fight with a knife is like this. I said, you're a damn lie. You're yeah, damn lie. Someone who's never fought. See what you mean? Because if I take even this, if I hold it like this, it's the extension of my arm by a few inches. Okay. If I hold it like this, it's not an extension of my arm. That means I, I, I have to, especially if it's a knife, I got to be trying to strike this way. That shortens my strikes too. My, my strikes are shorter. If I have it this way, a knife, I'm able to strike longer with the knife. Now we train on both ways because shit, in a fight, you may pick it up and it's like this. You better know how to work with it as opposed to saying, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. I got it right now. No, 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 no. You better be able to work power. Once again, that's improvising. But you should have an overarching plan of holding it in the standard. That's why it's called the standard position. There you go. Um, so we got the knife, firearm, which we're not going to show on here, and we're not going to shoot Bob and tear Bob up. I ain't shooting Bob, you know. <laughs> uh, that's a false multiplier. I had a discussion with uh, martial arts from another art. You know, they like to do the honorable. That's not honorable. Uh, he said, well, force multiplies is only what multiplies your force. Okay. I said, well, if I'm sure it's multiplying my force because that bullet show will hit you harder than my punch. <laughs> and I'm the one pulling the trigger. So it's a force multiplier. It allowed me force multipliers equalize yeah, bro. the danger. You don't, don't use other definitions like it's, it's, it's by your hand and makes your hand stronger. No, 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 it can, but that's not. So a pistol, rifle, those are force multipliers. Because believe me, they're going to make you hit hard. It's going to equalize somebody big coming at you on me, Nick, if you got a pistol. Or multiple people. Multiple people, right. It could be so. I'm walking, I'm skipping. Once again, I'm skipping. But I decided I, I skipped enough back there. I fed the dolphin, you know, <laughs> and, and I fed him, you know, a little mackerel or something. And then I didn't care because dolphins. <laughs> right? And then I didn't care. I'm sorry, oh, my nigga, dolphin's not vegan. I'm sorry. I don't need school mascot, y'all. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, dolphin is my school mascot. Whitney Young Dolphins, yes. So then we come from back. Well, I come from back there. Y'all going go back in the house. She, she and the children, they skip back in. And they eating uh, watermelon, right? Because that's a happy food, so they eating watermelon. I can see y'all going and you me skipping that bottle. Just them. <laughs> well, well, now I'm skipping up the block. <laughs> okay. And four, no, five people who are small and on Nikki, five women. He said, "Oh yeah, you about to whoop your ass!" And they got all got baseball bats. Come on, old man. Well, then I pop, 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 pop. Great equalizer. Great. Because it was one against many. You say you should. Man, look, they got big ball back. In fact, I said that because when I was in college, I'm sitting in Roy Rogers' restaurant. Yes, I was in D.C. for those in, who didn't know. My D.C. folk. I, was, I went to Howard. I'm sitting at, at Roy Rogers. I'm looking out the window. Here come four fine sisters, <laughs> fine, carrying a, a briefcase. I'm like, what's that a brief? And uh, no, they weren't carrying a briefcase. No, they weren't carrying a briefcase yet. They they walking thing. They came in Roy Rogers. They flirting. I'm flirting back. I'm oh boy, I'm, you know, <laughs> doing well. They they are beautiful, not just fine. When it's beautiful, like you know, I get, when I graduate, I can make one of them a wife. They like that right. And I know they had a baseball bat. I'm thinking they came from, you know, playing ball, softball or something. Dude walking up the street, they say, oh, oh, oh hold on. They go from flirting with me like, oh, hold on. I'm like, damn, okay, I guess he looked better because he got a suit and briefcase. You know, he looking good. He, you know, he, he, he's spiffy and shit. And I got on a t-shirt and jeans. So he's spiffy. They like him. 
I said, oh, well, you know, maybe I can talk to one of them after, you know, they talk, he can't talk to all of them. They run out there, the chick, boop, hit him upside the head with the baseball bat. They take his suitcase. They come back in Roy Rogers, go back to flirting with me. At that point, I'm like, I don't want to need one of them. Like, I ain't trying Ooh. to fight with them. I don't want, but damn, they tore him up, right? That's wrong. Bust his shit. Mm. These women, and he was a, a, a well-built, sizable dude, you know, uh, in his suit and briefcase. And they said, man, you know, they're trying to get in the briefcase as I got the hell up out of Roy Rogers. <laughs> that was so good. you got to be prepared to defend yourself. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Freedom Power says, my four, uh, oh boy, oh, okay. <laughs> my force multiplies my hands. He cold blooded or she cold blooded. All I need is my hand and I whip all y'all on any given day. I'm in DC. Come see me if y'all want this smoke. I'm the king of spades. Oh, spades. Okay. Yeah, I got you, know, it. you know who was in DC, Bob? I read who was in DC, the dude who told me. That's him. That's him. That's him. That's no, him. He, said, he said spades. He's talking about his spades hands. <laughs> Not actual. So uh be there on 10, so he wasn't even getting the joke. Uh, oh, okay, I got you. But Jared, so if, if, if he was serious, won the fight, see, I sent Jared, Jared's in DC. Okay. Hey, Jared. <laughs> I said, Jared, man, this dude stop problem, Jared. You know, just what? What? And I said, man, Jared, uh, so and so, and I, I got a name for Jared. So I said, hey. Freedom Power. He said, you want to fight? Jared said, what? Jared started putting on. He, he he go in his, he got a bucket downstairs with filled with glass. He take out the glove <laughs> and his it, his gloves got resin on it, so the glass sticking to it. He put the gloves on. <laughs> then he put his 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 combat boots on. And then he he come looking. <laughs> he come looking for Jared. That definitely would no, no. Uh, so uh, Freedom Pop said, "Man, I ain't stupid. Now we knew you were joking, man." Um, <laughs> no, we got his, hey, we space champions over here too. Now we don't play no games. Yeah. Yeah, so you really don't want none in space. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. With my hammer, Kitten was on it on Equalizer. See, I got to watch Equalizer 3 when mm -hmm. he worked in Home Depot. Oh, yeah, now in Equalizer, the first one, right? Uh, when he was in Home Depot, shit. Hammer, uh, uh, the nail gun. So that's what I was going to talk about real brief. So, um, we, you know, we talk unconventional tools and fist loads of any type could be helpful. So I just wanted to bring out, you may not have nothing but a lighter to do something. You yeah, don't do much. You want, you want, but you want to have, so the more weight, so you want to at least be a weighted lighter, like a metal lighter. Right. Uh, if you got a roll of pennies. Roll of pennies, work, work, nickels, dimes. And you can put, I, I think I talked about last week about this. Uh, these boys wanted to fight me. I know I talked to you about that. They wanted to fight me, uh, these two brothers. Mm -hmm. I put, um, we call them hardball. They small. You, you know, you, you throw them against the wall. You can, they like baseballs, but they darker. I don't know. Maybe it's just baseballs with the skin, not the eyes, but they hard. Mm -hmm. I put those in my scully, and I yeah. beat the heck out of the big brother. I was like 9, 10 at the time. I beat the heck out of the big brother. And then the little brother, I, I you know, I said, tell me I'm better than you. I think I told, I think yes, I, yes, I, I yes. Just, so, um, <laughs> you know, I didn't beat him with it cause once again, it wasn't a disparity of force. Understood. He was older than me, but he was shorter than me. Right. We about the same size and I'm trained. So it wasn't disparity of force. So I just threw him and smacked him around a little bit, made him say I'm better. But his big yeah. brother, I went to town on him, his big brother. So we were both, I was, I was like eight, uh, the brother was nine and his brother was about 11, hmm. 12. And I, whoa, whoa. As, as he was talking, I just hit him in the jaw. He, oh, and I just started wailing on him. And he just was standing all days up as I smacked his brother around. So force, <laughs> uh, force multiplied because of the disparity of force. This uh, this is a just a battery pack, uh, heavy, a heavy, heavy duty battery pack for uh, or ham radio. Yes. You may not want to mess up your, your extra battery pack, but look, you do what you gotta, you gotta do. Survive, yes. It's, it's, it's got a, it's got enough edge on it. Like you say, you rake across the face, it's gonna do something, you know. Make sure you have weight. So something like this, don't do it. it, it that's a waste of your time. That's a way. 
You might even you got, a nice, you got a nice flask. Yes. A flask <laughs> is a great, great fist load with nice little pummel on both sides. You know, I got a nice good. Be like walking good. around with a goddamn flask. <laughs> you know, uh, as a woman, also, you know, um, a, a good lip gloss with a good um, base to it is it's like a marker long enough. Yeah. It's now, do they base. make a. Uh, um, do, they, do they make lip gloss with uh like metal a metal base? Um, that would be dope. Probably not. I haven't seen one, but they do have you know hard some, glass. They right, got like hard the, glass um, sometimes. Do you have your uh, yeah, marker with you? Because you know some of the. Do you um, have your marker with you? I I can't find it. I, I think I stuck it in my bar bag. Mm. So if you if you seen the king markers, right? Uh, right. Sharpie, uh, marker. <laughs> Uh, the King markers, or the, they have another one that's extra, extra big or extra can something. Uh, those are like the pocket shot, right? Or like the flashlight, you know. It's so it's. I was it's, gonna it's, say too. Um, that's the. Um, you want to buy quality products, not just because they're good, but because a lot of times, like the packaging is gonna right. be a lot sturdier. So, you know, make sure that you good, get good, um, sturdy lip glosses. I, I don't want to endorse any particular company, but this one right here is by a known company and it's really, really solid. Like, you would not want to be thick, thick plastic, I mean, yeah. thick glass. Um, and also think about your kitchen knives at home. I think I mentioned this before. You know, um, you can buy a block of full tang kitchen knives. And you, they're good for when you're cooking, but also if you ever had to defend yourself, like those are great knives that will really hold up if you had to defend yourself with them. So think about if that. If you don't know a what Tang is, about, watch our show on blades because right. we discuss what Tang is and you want a knife with full Tang. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, when you, uh, uh, strategy is one of the force multipliers, right? Uh, and that's it because how you prepare when you walk out that door. Uh, so the sisters, this 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 came with the sisters with, with Ominiki, Wumi, Bumi, Ogunlewa, uh, of carrying the tool, uh, the knife, especially on the uh, bra strap. Yeah, is it the cap? Huh? It, yes, yeah, the the right? I mean, yeah, it's so, like, um, kind of strap. And then maybe kind of runs under your arms just a little bit, depending on the situation. But I mean, in the size of the knife, but it's basically attached to the strap. And then you, you know, you figure out how to work it in there so that it's um, inconspicuous. So we, I wouldn't have never came up with that. <laughs> right. And a lot of my length of training, uh, since I don't wear bras and, Hopefully, I never get so out of shape. I gotta wear one. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that so we don't. And, and, and you know, shout out to my brothers that got moves. Uh, you know, hit them push ups, my dude. Hit them push ups, and then you, you know, you start getting rid of them. And I'm not making mockery either. Push ups, anything dealing with chest exercises, you got to strengthen that because if, if a man has moves, then there's a weakness that's happening around there. Okay, and so and definitely for your strikes, th there's a weakness there. So hit those push-ups, a bunch of punches. Do like try to do start with a thousand, try to work your way up to ten thousand or maybe more a day. Those will strengthen this up. You yeah. will burn that off. Yes, yes, absolutely, and 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 the, and and tighten it, tighten those muscles in there, right? He is uh, he is speaking the exact truth on thank that. Thank you for this warrior class. On BPM, always enjoy. It. Thank you, thank you. Uh, we enjoy it. So um, that's force multipliers. And when we talk about multiples uh, against multiple, multiple attackers, right, right. Um, multiplicity yeah. means it's, it's it's doing great things, right? Greater than the norm. And so when you're using force multipliers, whether against single individuals or multiples it's multiplicity that you, you experience so that that was why it's multiplicity multiples and multiplies um so remember force multipliers and disparity of force they go together yeah, disparity of force is why you use a false
force multiply in the first place. When you're talking to anybody, I had to use this because there was a disparity of force. Right. And I had to. I mean, just, he was so much bigger, so much stronger, so much faster, so much more aggressive. Well, yeah. Had tools. Okay. So it's a disparity of force always. That's why you use a force multiplier. Okay. All right. So some of the high capitalists are making metal cosmetics to arm women against patriarchy. I bet. Right. Uh, I, I, I bet, I'm thinking, man, that'd be dope if that was a metal. It would it would probably look really, really cool too? I'd be buying the hell out of them for my yeah, wife. We just casting off jewels on the know. warrior class. Right. I, 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 I hope they don't make them, and then you know they get a thousand dollars from the thing. We get the idea. Room, we got a they special the warrior class too. too. Well, they could be refillable. That's uh, I'm gonna stop man. talking about. Oh, yeah, yeah, you better stop. Yeah, warrior, warrior lip gloss. When we got a special it. episode coming up after this at 315. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh at, at 315, um, so we're gonna get off here so y'all can you know yeah, take a bathroom break and stuff. <laughs> yeah. All right, y'all can take a bathroom break. Come right back because we have a special warrior class with um Ron Hall, who is a Hollywood actor, martial arts actor, as a matter of fact, in a popular uh a uh, couple popular movies, written a couple, um, directs. So we're going to get into it with him. And Talk he's got some, some things happening for us and some advice for us as uh, black people that may want to get involved in film, whether it's writing, whether it's uh, oh. uh, acting, uh, particularly martial art and films. And, uh, you know, I'll say this now. If you listen right now, Ron, I would love to have you uh, as the villain or the father of Ice Cold Carter in our Ice Cold Carter movie. Oh, my goodness. He be, oh, my goodness. <laughs> so I'm really thinking about, you know, I think the father that hit me, that would be dope. dope. So, be dope. so uh, be back with us in eight minutes. So love y'all. Stay black, whatever it is that you may be. Yes. Peace. Peace. See y'all at 315, y'all. All right. Come. All right, Jay.